So we've done our rubber head with this placement and now we're going to get into volume builder and fog and foam and stuff like that. And it's all really cool. But first I want to talk a little bit about noises and fields because it's not complicated, but we're going to be doing a lot of that mixed together and uh, it might get a little bit tricky uh, to, to kind of work through. Uh, so let's get a kind of a basic understanding of those. And again, I've only been using Cinema 4D for two weeks, so my basic understanding is pretty basic, uh, but hopefully it helps you. Uh, so we're going to go through here, and I'm going to hold down Alt, and we're going to double tap uh, Patrick over here, the body base, the head, and this uh, floor plane here. Just remove everything from our scene, and then we're going to go up here to Create Mesh Primitives Plane, and now we just have a plane sitting in our scene. And we, if we want to, we can hit the IPR Render, and there's our beautiful plane. Uh, and then we can just turn that off. So over here on this plane, let's turn on display shading with lines. Let's go over here to our object with that uh, plane selected. And we're going to take the segments up maybe to like 50 by 50. So we're going to be displacing this plane with a noise. Um, and we're going to be displacing it. And that is under here, under this deformer section. And again, if you go over here to create, there's uh, generators, which are green, deformers, which are purple, uh, and fields, which are pink. And those are all represented right here. Uh, of course, there is also uh, volumes, which are volume builder is also green. Uh, and MoGraph is also green. And those are also all right here. So that's how you create these nodes that we have over here on the right. And we have a plane that we want a displacement to act on. So I want it as a child of this plane. And how to make children is you can go long click in here, go down here to displacer. And before you click it, hold down shift. And that'll go ahead and put it underneath your plane. So now this dis displacer is acting on this plane. And how we want this displacer acting on this plane is with a noise. And when we talk about noise, that's going to happen in the shading part. So we have an object here. Uh, when we get the displacer to selected, we have the object, and that has height and type, which we're going to get into in just a second. And then over here in the shading, if you click this little arrow here, there's a, any number of things you can plug in here, but what we're going to be using is noise. So I'm just going to go and click on noise. And now again, under displacer, shading, we have noise. And if we click on this little swatch for our noise, we'll go into the noise options, and here's a whole bunch of noise options. So this is a really good place to start because we're kind of hopping back and forth between a bunch of different things. If I want to get out of noise, what you can do is click this little up arrow and that takes us back into the displacer, uh, shading objects, coordinates, if you want to move it around. But this is how we get up to that top level. And if we want to dive back in, we can go in here to shading and then click on the little shading icon. And then here's all of our noise options. Again, our shader is holding our noise information. Uh, so over here on our plane, we have uh, this noise, which is, you know, pretty basic noise affecting this plane. If we go up one level over here to object, now we have height. So this is the, the controlling the height of that noise that's in the shader acting on our object. Uh, you're going to see intensity centered. And if you click that, there's a bunch of options in here. With intensity centered on here, if we do a, a positive height, you're going to see the, the height goes up, but it also creates valleys. So we have mountains, our peaks, and valleys in here. If we change this from intensity center to intensity, now when we do a positive value, it's only going to act in a positive way or a positive amount. There's not going to be any valleys created from the original plane. It's everything's just going to go up. Uh, same thing if we go to a negative value. Nothing's going to go above that plane. Everything's going to be uh, a negative value, creating a bunch of valleys. And you know, also creating peaks, uh, but not going above the original plane location. In this instance, I'm going to say intensity centered so that when we dry, dial in a value, it'll stay in the middle and things will go up and down from that. Uh, if we go in here to shading and again, dial it into our noise here, uh, these are our noise options. And I'm going to click this and raise it up so that we can get, uh, see the noise options and how the noise is interacting. Because if I go down here, uh, for example, I take contrast. You know what contrast does? It makes the, the black areas and the white areas more contrasty. So if I click this up, you're going to see uh, we're getting more contrast there. Uh, for low clip, if I bring this up, you're going to see those black values. Uh, any, any sort of dark grays are going to turn to black, and then the black values themselves are going to start increasing in importance. So you're getting more black values. Same thing with the high clip. If you take this down, the light gray values are going to turn to white, and then you're going to get more and more white. And eventually, if you get these close together, you can have a very contrasty image, especially if we take this contrast slider and crank it up. Uh, overall brightness, if we go to the right here, it's going to make it eventually white. And then over here, it's going to make it eventually black, uh, depending on what those values are. And you're going to see while we're making those changes, it's updating over here uh, on our plane. So let's go ahead and set these back to our the original value. So zero, 100, zero, and zero. 
Now, the really cool thing about noise, at least what I think is cool about noise, is you can animate it. Uh, so if we go over here to uh, animation speed, we'll go ahead and set this to one. Um, and then loop period here is, it's not in frames, it's in seconds. So let's, uh, let's change this to 90. So down here in the lower right, we've got this set to 90 frames. So when I hit this play button, it's going to go through and play uh, 90 frames, which is three seconds, assuming, let's double check, go into your render settings here, uh, output, yeah, 30 frames, a, 30 frames a second. So 30, 60, 90 is three seconds. So I'm gonna say animation speed of one, loop period of three. And now when I go through here and play, you're gonna see it's gonna to get to the end of 90. And when it starts over, it's gonna be a seamless loop. So if you ever wanna do a looping animation of something, uh, for instance, if you go to my station page here, we did our little uh, ship in a bottle here. And if we just go to the water part, uh, this water is perfectly looping. So it's displacing this water here. And we're gonna talk about that and then fields uh, to confine it just to a certain area. But you can see as it goes through, I mean, it's not super obvious because I'm switching between different versions, uh, but that water is looping and so is this. So there is our, and it's not water, it's just noise displacing a plane and looping. Now, if we want to have a, and let's go ahead and turn on our RP ren, IPR render here, uh, you're seeing we're getting a very uh, jagged look. A um, couple different ways we can fix that. One way is you can go back to your plane here, right click, say render tags, go down here and make it a redshift object tag, go in here to geometry. And just like we did in the earlier video when we had our displacement, we had to go in here to geometry, click override, just click on tessellation, and that'll go ahead and add geometry where it needs it to get a smooth result. Um, also, let's go ahead and delete that tag off of there. You can go in here and you can add a subdivision surface. Now again, uh, that's up here under subdivision surface. It's also underneath create generator subdivision surface so if you uh we, and we want to make the subdivision surface a parent of our plane uh, so like we did before with the displacer if you hold down shift and click subdivision surface or long click and then click subdivision surface it's going to make it a child if you hold down alt it'll make it a parent so now we have a plane that has a displacer displacing that plane and then above that plane you have a subdivision surface taking the result of that displaced plane and subdividing it. And you can go over here and change that. So down here, here's zero, here's one, here's two, here's three. So we'll be doing that later on our SpongeBob head. And the reason I'm bringing up subdivision surfaces, because you may be thinking like, well, why don't you just do it on the render, is because when we get into Volume Builder, it's expecting real geometry to act on, not a render result after the fact, after processing. So if you want real geometry, you can't just go into like a material for the plane. Actually, you could. You can go into the material of a plane, apply a displacement material, and have that just be a material effect on the object uh, at render time. But what we really need for volumes is real geometry moving and displacing actual geometry so the volume can, uh, can act on it. Which again, that volume is actually going to be a parent of our subdivision surface later. So that's, that's the reason I bring up uh, subdivision surfaces as opposed to, you know, doing a material or a render fix. Now, back to animation. I'm going to turn off this IPR render. We're going to look at this plane. Let's go in here to display. Let's go back to our regular shading mode here. And then back in our displacer, again, we have object level stuff that controls our height. And then we have shading level stuff, which we have noise plugged into, which is controlling what type of noise. So let's go in here. Uh, and in fact, you click on the noise menu here, you're going to see a whole bunch of noises to choose from. and in other version, I'm in uh, R26014. To the right here is like a, I don't see anything there. In other versions I've seen, there's a little arrow to the right of this. If you just click in this blank area, it'll show you, oh, it's cut off. I'll, I'll put a little image here. Uh, a bunch of different noise images that you can choose from. So you don't have to just guess as to what it does. Uh, so for instance, I'm gonna go in here to noise and I'm gonna change this to stuple. And now if I go and play, it's going to play this kind of, Kind of look like a boiling water uh, animation. So again, we have our animation set to one, our loop period set to three, so it's a seamless looping uh, result. But what I'm gonna do is take this global scale. If I turn it down, it's going to increase. And then let's go ahead and turn this off so you can see this update. So as I change this global scale down, you're seeing it gets tiling this more and more. Um, if you wanna see it animate here, you can right click and say animate. And if you want it a little bit bigger, just right click and say open window. And then you can move this you know, scale it up a little bit and move it. And you're gonna see, oh, this actually looks like rolling water. So why am I not getting that effect? Uh, well, let's take this global scale and let's really crank it up. 
And again, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off, so I see how cool that looks. I'm gonna go in here, right click, turn off animate here, and I'm gonna play here. So now we're getting our displacements. Let's keep cranking that up here. So now we're getting kind of rolling waves on our plane here. And in fact, what you can do is you can have uh, an object on here that's being affected uh, by the waves, as opposed to what I did here, which is basically just put a vibrate tag on this ship and just have it bob there. It's not being affected by the water at all. You can have an object that's being affected by the displaced geometry that you can kind of triangulate coordinates and have it, you know, as something goes up, it, the object will go up with it. I'll link you in the video description where that is. It's actually right here, uh, School of Motion. They have a water shader, which goes over a lot of what we're covering in this particular section, but also how to make things, objects interact with that displaced water or that displaced geometry. Now, another thing to kind of sell that water effect is you can go over here and you can say movement. So let's move it in the Z, maybe one centimeter, and then the speed will set to one. So now as this thing is moving, and being displaced, it's also moving uh, left to right. Now this doesn't appear to be looping. There may be a way to go in here and say maybe like one divided by three, and then maybe set this to a higher level. Yeah, I don't know. But that's another thing too that's kind of cool. Um, as far as the looping on the movement, I'm not exactly sure. So I'm gonna turn this off. But if you ever wanna do math in Cinema 4D, you can go over here to like, Animation speed is five, and then you're like, no, I want it to be five divided by three, and it'll go ahead and do that math for you. Anyway, we'll turn this back down. So we've got animation on this plane. It's looping. And let's say I want to limit where this effect happens on this plane. And how you do that is with fields. So if we go up here to this placer, uh, you're going to see we have object settings, which again is our height. So we can make it more or less height. And then over here, shading, that's what's animating with our noise and to the right of that is fields and in this fields you can go through and you can long click these and add fields uh, that's no different so if we go in here and we say add a spherical field you're going to see it's going to make a child spherical field on your displacer and wherever this sphere is uh, is going to be where that noise is allowed to show up uh, if you want to make that sphere bigger you can drag drag this big dot here or you can go and update the size and then here is the fall off dot you can just grab that and there's your fall off so that's going to tell where this noise is allowed to show up on this plane. Uh, now here, if we go in here and delete that, again, if you wanna make a child, you hold down shift, go in here to add a field, make it a spherical field. It's doing the exact same thing. Now everything is parented. It's got a section in here with the type and you can go through here and change where and how the noise is gonna interact. Uh, another thing you can do, if we delete that, we can go in here go into fields, long click this and say shader field. And just like when we were in the displacer and we used uh, a noise in the shader, you can actually go into fields, which again is where it's telling anything this field is acting on, what it's allowed to show. So we can go in here to shader. We can say, okay, give me a noise. And now this noise is telling, well, the noise in the field is now telling the displaced noise where it's allowed to show up. So in that shader field noise, if we click on that, let's go ahead and stop our animation. We can go in here, let's make this really obvious. So uh, we'll just crank that contrast up, take our global scale uh, up. In fact, we can even animate this. So we can say again, animation speed of one, loop period of three. So now we have noise displacing this that looks like waves. And then we have just regular noise saying, hey, this is the only place you're allowed to have waves show up. And that's held under the field options. And then you can change any field parameters. And now when we hit play, we'll have a seamless looping Kind of looks like worms uh, crawling under skin or something like that, or whatever this first shark test says to you. But all of these things are acting together uh, in order to give this this final result. And of course, you know, on render, uh, that'll be the result we end up having. So again, this is just kind of a stopover to explain what we're going to be diving into next, which is subdivisions and displacers and fields. Uh, but just to kind of get a feel for what those things are before we apply it to a more complex object, which is going to be our SpongeBob head.